My GT Project by Cameron Abara. High order thinking skills needed to solve puzzles like crossword Sudoku logic puzzles and picture logic puzzles. For a, for a crossword, you need to understand what the hints mean in a problem solving mindset to help you figure it out. For Sudoku, you need logical thinking to think ahead to know where to place these numbers and if they are in the correct place. For logic puzzles, you need to analyze the problem and produce a potential solution. You should also use logic based on its name. Picture logic puzzles. Looking closely to the puzzle and understanding what it's asking to better understand what you should do to solve. And you should also use common logic. Survey results part one, crossword. For, uh, for these surveys, I picked three different puzzles and had a person fill it out and complete it, uh, ranking the difficulty from one to 10, time, give me their time and how long it took, and entertainment out of a seven, a seven I meant one out of 10. <clears throat> and I used my dad for these surveys. So for crossword, he said, he said the difficulty was a four out of 10, the time took him 44 minutes, and the entertainment was a seven out of 10. My dad used to say it took him days to complete these. So River Results Part 2, Word Search. Difficulty 3, Time 7.2 Minutes, Entertainment 8 out of 10. So River Results Part 3, Sudoku. Difficulty 6 out of 10, Time 4, 45 Minutes, Entertainment 7 out of 10. Sorry if you're making it so blurry. Compare and contrast in the Rubik's Cube and a Japanese puzzle box. The similarities that they have in common are that they both involve knowing the next step. They also involve paying attention to the steps or, or else you'll mess up the whole thing and you, know, and you won't know what to do when you do that. Both include using logic to figure out what the next step is correct or not. The difference between them is that the Japanese puzzle box contains multiple different steps and are made in a unique and different way every single time, so people won't automatically figure it out. The Rubik's Cube, on the other hand, is the same thing and just repeats steps to solve it. For a Rubik's Cube, you know the next step, but for a puzzle box, you need to poke at it before you can solve it and get ready for the next step. How is Sudoku created? Sudoku is the project that I made for my GT project. Sudoku was made by a man named Ma Maki Kaji. He repurposed the original model, which was called Latin Squares. He designed it to be easier for kids and let them enjoy and challenge themselves to a simple puzzle that people can create to be more difficult. What is the brain science behind it? To solve a Sudoku puzzle, people need to understand the complexity of how hard it is. They designed this puzzle to be easy to children and people who, who didn't want to think as much because the original one was too challenging. How does Sudoku challenge your thinking? Trying Sudoku is another working, working memory training activity. It's like chess. While you're making a move, you must think three or four steps ahead to your next move because if not, you might not place the number in the correct place and you will be confused on what to do and that it's a good exercise for the brain. How will Sudoku entertain someone? Most people say that Sudoku brings a sense of calm and order. Many people make Sudoku a part of their daily schedule because it refreshes them and allows them to meet the other commitments with renewed energy and vigor. Playing Sudoku also helps people feel a sense of mastery. These are one of the many reasons why this game is so popular. How Sudoku changed over time. The Sudoku story began in 1783 when Leonhard Euler, a Swiss mathematician, devised Latin squares, where he described as a new kind of magic squares. Euler had produced a grid in which every number or symbol appears once in each row or column. Useful purposes for Sudoku to help your brain. Sudoku requires attention of the subject to analyze the grids and fill in the numbers. Basically, it requires no math, but is based on logic. Solving puzzles has long been thought to keep the brain healthy and has been shown to slow the de delay of the onset of dementia. Sudoku can help your mind. Practicing a game like Sudoku or using a brain training app might make you better at it, but it won't boost your IQ or general brain power. A study claimed. And instead, 
Researchers suggest people exercise more, socialize, and make sure they get enough sleep if they want their minds to be sharper. Another useful fact about Sudoku. Sudoku has proven to help engage and keep your brain healthy and overall helps people think in a wider range that can help your brain to be very healthy and active. What it looks like. This is a basic model of what Sudoku looks like so you can get an idea to see how challenging it is. This is a model that I created myself. How to play. To play Sudoku, you need to put a number one through nine in each row, column, and box. You can only use that number one time in each of those places that I stated. Each Sudoku grid has nine boxes, nine rows, and nine columns. Why I chose this project. I wanted to write and talk about something that can engage and make the mind healthy while also being fun and interactive. It is engaging because you have to think about the next move and if you can place it there or not. It is a very fun game and once you understand it, you start to get really interested in it the same as I do. Thank you for watching.